Hello everyone. Myself, Dr. Aman Shara Gupta, JR2 uh, Radiology Department from Dr. VPMC Nashik. Today I'll be presenting a paper on spectrum of findings in MRCP in evaluation of chronic pancreatitis case series. So that is a, a brief about the abstract. Chronic pancreatitis is characterized by relentless inflammatory and fibrotic changes of the gland, eventually leading to exocrine and endocrine dysfunction. It can severely impair the quality of life besides direct threatening acute and long-term complications. And the current incidence ranges from 4.4 to 14% per 1 lakh people, with a prevalence of 36.9 to 52.4 per 1 lakh persons, with a male predominance by a factor of 1.5 to 4.6 and a median survival of 20 years. So aim is to study the role of MRI or MRCP in evaluating the spectrum of chronic pancreatitis. Uh, materials, methods, from MRI brain was done in 50 patients with clinical suspicion of chronic pancreatitis. And MRI combined with MRCP is an excellent modality to assess patients with clinically suspected chronic pancreatitis. And results were obtained, which, were, which was MRI is useful in determining different spectrum of findings of chronic pancreatitis and, it is, uh, and its associated complications. So pancreas is an accessory organ of digestion known to have dual function in the endocrine and exocrine systems. And the pancreas has a main pancreatic duct running through the length of it, an accessory duct and uh, various cell types. The ducts can become blocked or they can be genetically deformed. Uh, during constant inflammation, scarring and fibrosis of the ducts leads to permanent damage to many structures impairing its secretory functions. Chronic pancreatitis is a progressive inflammatory disease of the pancreas that affects both functions, that is exocrine, and as well as the endocrine dysfunction of the pancreas, that is clinical entity that results from the cumulative injury sustained by the pancreas over time. Chronic pancreatitis is an important gastrointestinal cause of morbidity worldwide, and early diagnosis of chronic pancreatitis is crucial to alter the human course of the disease. However, majority of the cases are diagnosed in the advanced stage. So the role of the various imaging techniques is the diagnosis of the chronic pancreatitis uh, is important for the early intervention. Early diagnosis of the chronic pancreatitis is difficult. Biochemical studies do not help in definite diagnosis in the early uh, stages. Definitive diagnosis of chronic pancreatitis is established in advanced cases with a destruction of greater than 90% of the pancreas. Several imaging modalities have been used to assess the pancreas such as abdominal radiographs, ultrasound, com uh, computed tomography, MRCP and ERCP. So, radiograph is now an obsolete tool for the diagnosis of chronic pancreatitis and has a poor sensitivity. Ultrasonography of pancreas is challenging due to the bowel gases, shadows, uh, obscuring part or whole of the pancreas. Transabdominal sonography has a limited scope in assessment of the pancreas in the obese individuals and gaseous abodement as a sensitivity and specificity of 83% and 80% respectively for the diagnosis of chronic pancreatitis. So drawbacks of the endoscopic ultrasound are its inter and intra observer variability and false positivity. As a few findings of chronic pancreatitis like echogenic septations can be normally seen with aging in smokers and in alcoholics. Calcifications are seen in the late stages of chronic pancreatitis and hence detection of chronic pancreatitis in early stages using CT is difficult. Sensitivity of CTs in detecting late stages of chronic pancreatitis is 60 to 95 percent. MRI and MRCP has superseded the CT in detection of pancreatic ductal abnormalities. And as MRCP is a non-invasive tool, it has preferred over ERCP for the diagnostic imaging of the bile duct and pancreatic ducts. MRCP or MRI is more sensitive than CT and in, is emerging as the initial radiological investigation of choice for the evaluation of chronic pancreatitis with unequivocal CT scans. Aims and objectives to emphasize on the role of the MRI or MRCP detection and characterization of chronic pancreatitis and to study the different imaging patterns of chronic pancreatitis using MRI and MRCP. So etiopathogenesis, We'll shortly look into it. Causes of uh, chronic pancreatitis include alcohol abuse, ductal obstruction, genetics, chemotherapy, autoimmune diseases such as SLE and autoimmune pancreatitis. New studies are finding that deficiencies in certain vitamins and anti antioxidants as well may be linked to the disease. So mo the most common cause is alcohol consumption. The alcohol increased secretions of proteins from SNR cells, causing the fluid to become viscous, leading to ductal obstruction, SNR fibrosis and atrophy. Fortunately, less than 10% of alcoholics uh, develop this. 
So uh, in chronic pancreatitis, it is suggesting that the other mechanisms play a role in the pathology. Other common causes include hypercalcemia, hyperlipidemia, nutrition, obstruction of the duct medication. So there is a digaro, uh, that mnemonic for causes of uh, uh, chronic pancreatitis, there is toxic metabolite, idiopathic, genetic, autoimmune, uh, recurrent and severe acute pancreatitis and obstructive. Course of illness is the early phase, it's approximately first five years of the illness. Middle phase is the first uh, five to 10 years and late phase is for approximately 10 years of onwards. So role of MR imaging is the MRCP is the premier diagnostic imaging uh, study because it can reveal calcifications, that is a hallmark sign, and critical enlargement, atrophy, or ductal obstruction or dilatation. MRCP has higher sensitivity and specificity for chronic pancreatitis than does the transabdominal ultrasound or plain films, though both can reveal calcifications. But uh, MRI is more sensitive than CT and is emerging as the initial radiological imaging modality of choice for the evaluation of chronic pancreatitis with unequivocal CT scans. Features of chronic pancreatitis can be divided into early or late findings. Early, uh, low signal intensity pancreas on T1 weighted fat suppressed images, decreased and delayed enhancement after IV contrast administration of dilated side branches. Here we can see the low in signal intensity pancreas on T1 weighted fat suppressed images. Whereas in late findings are parenchymal atrophy or enlargement, pseudocyst formation, dilatation and beating of the pancreatic uh, duct often with intraductal calcification could give a chain of lake appearance. Here we can see the beaded pancreatic duct with a chain with a chain of uh, lake appearance and the pseudocyst formation in the same patient. On conventional MRI, normal pancreas appears diffusely hyperintense on T1 weighted images due to presence of proteinaceous enzyme. Fat saturated sequence helps in suppressing the retroperitoneal fat and thus improves the contrast between the hyperintense pancreas and the fat suppressed retroperitoneum. So on T1, we'll see a hypointense areas corresponding to inflammation, fibrosis of local lesions. Contrast and Steven will show had heterogeneous signals and delayed post gadolinium enhancement due to presence of fibrotic areas, which impede the capillary flow. And reduced anteroposterior thickness of the pancreas that will lead to atrophy and then calcifications, then ductal calculi. And MRCP is the most useful for ductal assessment. Spectrum of injury is a, uh, the grading for chronic pancreatitis was done based on Cambridge calcification based on the status of the main pancreatic duct and the presence of the side branches abnormalities. So uh, grading goes like uh, Cambridge 1 classification is for the normal pancreas. Cambridge 2 is equivocal, that is dilatation or obstruction of the less than three side branches with a normal main pancreatic duct. Cambridge 3, that is mild uh, grade, is dilatation and obstruction of more than three side branches with normal main pancreatic duct. Cambridge 4 is moderate, is Cambridge uh, 3 with stenosis and dilatation of main pancreatic duct and Cambridge 5 is severe. Cambridge 3 and 4 plus additional obstructions, stenosis, uh, main pancreatic duct and calculi. So uh, in our case series, we found uh, normal well, one normal case, equivocal 7 cases, mild 10 cases, moderate 20 cases and severe 12 cases. So moderate pancreatitis was the most common finding in our case series. Moderate pancreatitis was seen in 40% of cases, whereas severe pancreatitis in 24% of the cases. So uh, basic types of chronic pancreatitis are chronic obstructive, chronic calcifying, autoimmune pancreatitis, tropical pancreatitis, and proof pancreatitis. So morphological and etiological classification, uh, we uh, on our case series, we divided the number of cases. So we 32 number of cases we got from chronic, uh, chronic calcified pancreatitis. Chronic obstructive pancreatitis were 12 of them, autoimmune were four of them, and roof pancreatitis was one and tropical one. Chronic calcifying pancreatitis is a case with a, a tiny T1 hypointense areas in a 16 year old man with small pancreatic duct stone causing duct obstruction and segmental pancreatitis. That is, a T1 fat, uh, weighted fat uh, suppressed image shows abnormal low signal intensity of pancreatic tail while remainder of the pancreas has normal bright signal intensity. In a chronic obstructive pancreatitis, we saw a dilated pancreatic duct with a obstructing pancreatic stone in a 24-year-old woman with small pancreatic duct stone causing duct obstruction and pancreatitis. Exil enhanced even weighted fat suppressed image 
obtained during arterial phase shows delayed enhancement of pancreatic tail related to normal pancreas due to fibrosis. So this is another case of autoimmune pancreatitis in which you can see a sausage-shaped pancreas in a 24-year-old male uh, shows decreased signal intensity on T1-weighted images. On T1 gadolinium images, you can see delayed parenchymal enhancement on di dynamic scanning and DWI and ADC, we can see uh, restriction with high DWI signal and low ADC signal. On MRCP, multiple intrahepatic duct structures and common biliary and diffuse narrowing of uh, main pancreatic duct can be seen. So another form of chronic pancreatitis is groove pancreatitis. This is another case we saw that was 57 year old male with two history of, uh, of chronic pancreatitis and groove pancreatitis in which the paraduodenal in a groove involvement was there with a bulky head of pancreas. Complications are of chronic pancreatitis were seen involving pancreas itself and tissue surrounding the pancreas. Most common pancreatic complication was pseudocyst formation in 54% of the patients. Most common extrapancreatic complications were uh, vascular complications, including the portal vein or splenic and thrombosis with or without resultant splenic or liver infarcts. Less frequent were internal pancreatic fistula, obstructions of different uh, parts of gastrointestinal tract. Of the 50 subjects, 24 of them developed complications. So these were the findings. We got um, pseudocyst in 13 uh, patients, world of necrosis in two patients, and extra pancreatic complications in uh, with vascular complications in four of them, biliary complications in three of them, and pancreatic carcinoma in one of them. So this is a case of pancreatic pseudocyst with a uh, incidental finding of gallstones with recurrent pancreatitis. Axial T2 weighted image shows thick wall loculated cystic lesion located primarily in the lesser sac representing pseudocyst. And the same patient, uh, uh, in another patient, in a 59-year-old woman, uh, man with history of chronic pancreatitis, we saw a ductal, so common bile duct dilatation with a stone uh, evaluating the biliary tract and coronal images shows the dilatation of common bile duct and contains the calculus. Common bile duct dilatation was again seen in one patient with history of pancreatitis. T2 weighted uh, rare images shows dilated common bile duct with funnel shaped narrowing. So our conclusion is diagnosis of chronic pancreatitis continues to present a clinical challenge. However, Recent guidelines have brought the much needed direction and clarity to this endeavor. This review, we emphasize the role of uh, MRI in imaging all types of chronic pancreatitis, pancreatic complications as well. MRI is a valuable alternative modality with at least equal diagnostic performance to CT for the diagnosis and follow-up of chronic pancreatitis. Additive advantages of MRCP imaging protocols make MRI a very accurate investigation modality for assessing patients with pancreatitis, particularly acutely ill patients unable to breath hold. So MRCP is equally or equally or more important than CT. And thank you. These are my references.